the hands of the guy who saved the penalty for Wimbledon at Leeds. Dickie Guy is with us on the big match today. A very warm welcome to this special cup tie edition of the big match and our most welcome guest on the program today is of course Dickie Guy of Wimbledon who saved that penalty at Ellen Road and provided the FA Cup with one of its greatest upsets in years. See how Wimbledon held mighty leads to that draw on the program later on. Our other cup ties today are West Ham against Swindon, the match that had a furious finish to it and also Coventry against Arsenal. We're going to keep our cup theme going with our big match playback as well this week because uh, what we're going to show you is the day when Chelsea met Watford in an FA Cup semi-final. But first, of course, we're going to start with the current action. Admitting, of course, that it's for the second successive week that we've gone to West Ham. But Upton Park yesterday, they had one of those vital ingredients in cup tie football, inequality, when a first division club came face to face with one from the third division. So West Ham, first of all, led out, of course, by their skipper, Billy Bonds. Slightly less impressive over the past few weeks, and now with that apprehensive feeling of being on a hiding to nothing against a team from the third division. Of course, a team that will run until it drops. And here, in fact, are Swindon Town. John Trollope is their captain. They've got a great cup-fighting tradition at Swindon, of course, remembering that miraculous Wembley win against Arsenal in 1969. And three of those fellows survived from that great Wembley exploit as we pick up the two teams for this fourth-round tie. The three men in question are John Trollope at number three, Frank Burrows, who'll be wearing the number five shirt, and Joe Butler at number ten. Meanwhile, West Ham have made changes. Keith Robson is under suspension. John McDowell moves back to number two. Clyde Best is nine, and Pat Holland eleven. But West Ham know they've got to watch Swindon's Peter Easto. Twenty goals this season. Now facing an old friend in Kevin Locke. Well, I know Kevin very well, and uh, he play, he's played quite well, really. Played for the England youth team when I was uh, there. Uh, a couple of years back. It's really quite interesting, I'm looking forward to it. The lads are quite confident, I think we'll do well. The winds are a bit swirling and I think that'll hinder us a bit. And what does Kevin Locke have to say about Peter Easter? Well, I've played with him for the England youth team and he's a very good player, you know, he's obviously one to watch. He's a great target man, great control, you know, he knocks them off and run, he's very quick in the box and I think he'll be the danger to us today. It's just like another match to us. I think we're all confident, but as I say, we're not treating it lightly. And the referee today at Upton Park is one of the best from the World Cup last summer. It is, of course, Clive Thomas of Wales. And the crowd at West Ham yesterday was 35,000 strong. And it's Swindon Town from the third division who kick off. The going will be heavy for both sides, and they know the going will be hard as well with so much at stake in this cup tie. Swindon having a relatively good season in the uh, third division, just as West Ham are in the first. And here's Jim Barron, the goalkeeper. Used to be with Wolves, Chelsea, Oxford and Nottingham Forest. John Trollope going for this one with uh, Pat Holland, but in fact it was uh, finally Moss who got the header in. Here's Taylor, though, for West Ham. Hit firmly forward there, nicely weighted there into the path of Clyde Best. While Holland is still there, Ball out of play. The throw to West Ham. Brooking, Best. Trying to come away from Burrows just for a yard or so, still with Best. A corner. So pressure on this man, Jim Barron. Pressure on the Swindon Town defence. Four minutes gone. Tommy Taylor adding to that pressure. Number five in there. Patton now with that left foot curling corner and Trollope didn't get ahead of it and it had to be turned behind by the number 10 Joe Butler. There's the other number 10 Trevor Brooking who was right in there and another corner to West Ham and another teasing and tempting one from Graham Patton I would imagine. Floated a little higher this time. 
very difficult surface and Holland not making things easy for Tom Jenkins Jenkins to Easto though again Easto not getting his passes in Lampard Billy Barnes that great marauding run of Bonds again good covering though by Butler he's still got it across there jumping by Jennings and it uh, wasn't quite high enough and Dixon now Wilf Dixon can take it away for Swindon Easto what a good pass there by Easto Taylor's header, nicely judged. McDowell, a chip to Paddle. Lampard away outside him, here he is. Best and Brooking and uh, Jennings, and deep, Pat Holland. There's the header by Holland, oh, that needed a good save. Holland came in very well, and Lampard and Paddle between them were quick to spot him on that far side, and a good cross which caused Barron a bit of trouble, although there was an infringement there. McDowell. Jennings jumping uh, too early then. Now Trevor Anderson, can he put it into the path of Easto? He can, this is the chance now. Oh, and Day had to save well. That was a lovely break by Swindon. A nicely played pass by Trevor Anderson. And Easto showing why he'd scored so many goals with an on-target shot. And Day going down to save. Now Patton. To McDowell. There's the cross going in. Jennings on the far side, floating in there, but again jumping too early. Patton. Corner. Referee having a word with Trollop and with Profit. And now with Frank Burrows. Brooking again with a corner for West Ham. Again curling in there. Oh, and that very nearly got in there. Jennings. Uh, Tried to turn it back, and now there's a break on for Swindon. And they're going to do their best to make full advantage of it. Easto leading the charge with Trollope in a lot of space outside him. Still with Easto. Oh, and Day was in trouble there, bouncing just in front of him awkwardly. Now McDowell. Best. McDowell again. Played forward for Brooking. The game really beginning to warm up now. That's a fair looking cross again by Trevor Brooking, and Jennings couldn't make anything on him on the far side. Jenkins. Calmly back to back. Good calm play there by Tom Jenkins. Easto's header, and what a good one, too. Straight to. Uh, Butler, and now to Moss. Local lad, spotted as a junior, there's Joe Butler with a shot and a good one! Oh, and what a good save by Day. Tremendous quick-fire shot, though, by Joe Butler. Came right out of the blue, that one, from uh, Moss's pass, and Day did well. Brooking, running into trouble. And Swindon, again, defending so well. They really have looked a good organised size in good spirits at the moment, Swindon. And here's Dave Moss with a shot, which should cause no trouble at all. Now it's with Holland. Here's Billy Bonds. Best is off in pursuit, but he'll never catch it. And John Lyle in the centre of the picture there, the West Ham team manager. A little anxious, I would think, to 
because his side have had more of the game, West Ham. They don't really yet look as though they're going to make a breakthrough. Certain coordination has gone too from West Ham. And Swindon are growing in confidence, particularly in defence, although they never seem to have lacked that from the word go. a good piece of play by Joe Butler Easto down and getting up but not before Bonds could take it off him and Danny Williams in the centre there the man who took Swindon to Wembley in 69 must uh, have a lot to be satisfied with in his team's performance in this first half we're into injury time now as Bonds takes it up again and they're passing away off the mark the pitch is difficult and it has levelled everything up it's drawn the uh, third division that much closer to the first. Although that's uh, in no way trying to discredit Swindon, who've defended superbly in this uh, first half. They've denied West Ham really clear-cut chances. And all the targets that West Ham, all the shots that they've had on target, have been straight at Jim Barron. So it's Swindon who go in at half-time with uh, most to be satisfied about. Defending well and just the first few worry lines, I would think, beginning to show on West Ham faces. Well, so much more to come on the big match, this cup tie edition this afternoon. As the players leave the field for half-time, the half-time score then at Upton Park, which reads West Ham nil, Swindon nil, and we'll be right back. Fifteen second roll to TX. So welcome back to Upton Park. Can Swindon Town now stick it out for another 45 minutes to cause a great cup surprise here at Upton Park? Nil-nil we are, and here's Brooking as West Ham attack the goal to our left. Swindon, who've beaten Reading and Maidstone and Lincoln, all at home, incidentally, in uh, previous rounds. West Ham, who went to Southampton in the last round and won. Here's Jennings. Will it come for Clyde Best? No, because Barron again is there in the nick of time for Swindon Town. Well, the young West Ham supporters are getting edgy. And certainly, as every minute goes by, it becomes just a little bit more desperate for West Ham. Padden for Lampard, trying one himself, oh, and it had to be tipped over by Barron. A real left foot special, that by Frank Lampard, and he scored from one or two in his time. He's got four this season, in fact, caught it well, and a nicely judged tip over by Barron. So, another corner to West Ham. Taylor right up there again, so is Best, so is Bonds, and Holland, and Padden in there. Bonds making a run towards the near post. Played, though, for Lampard. And hit right foot. Offside. Holland. And a free kick to West Ham. Holland again for West Ham. McDowell outside him. There's the cross going in. Brooking trying to get there. Oh, and it's squirmed away from Billy Jennings as well. It's a couple of occasions in the game when early crosses by McDowell very nearly produce something. And that time an early cross, just a little uh, too high for Brooking to do anything and just a little too quick for Jennings. But it's got the crowd going now. 
That looked like a push on Brooking and the referee wisely played the advantage. Now can Jennings get in there? No, he can't. Can Patton do anything for West Ham? There's the cross going in. Swindon under a tremendous amount of pressure now. Lampard missing his kick. And now Brooking. And a corner. Well, I don't know whether Swindon thought they must have heard a whistle there. There was certainly a defender standing still as Brooking went by him. And the crowd now beginning to get behind West Ham. Sensing the danger that they're in, still nil-nil, with something like 25 minutes to go. And Brooking with another corner. The claret and blue shirts are up there in strength. Taylor with a header, but it's gone wide. Goal kick. They've really defended so well, Swindon, though. They've never for a moment lost their nerve, and here's Trollope with the goal kick for them. Easto. Nicely cut out by Lampard. Oh, Best didn't make anything of that, and Easto can take it up now for Swindon. McLaughlin's made a good run, and Anderson too. And now Anderson! Oh, he's been pulled back! And that will mean trouble for Tommy Taylor. And whatever he gets, he deserves. Because Anderson was through with basically only the goalkeeper to beat. And that is gamesmanship at its worst. And Tommy Taylor gets his name in the book. And maybe he's lucky to get no more. That fell... Taylor, in fact, didn't really know where the ball was going, and it fell beautifully for Anderson. Blatant piece of pulling back. And Swindon now with the free kick, which uh, Jenkins couldn't do anything with. Trollope is right in there too. So is Easto! Oh, and he very nearly made it! So West Ham are in all sorts of trouble, and Best might lose it now. He's played it back to Day, and Day hasn't even got it yet. But that time the foot was up by Easto on the West Ham goalkeeper, Mervyn Day. And so it's a free kick to West Ham. And that's just about the biggest scare they've had. Best header and a good one. Straight to uh, Trevor Brooking. Flipped on this time for Billy Jennings. Yes! Billy Jennings has done it. The breakthrough for West Ham at long, long last. And the relief is there for all to see around Upton Park. A swift break down the right. A good header on by Best, who's not had the best of games. Laid on by Brooking. And Billy Jennings there to whack it from that sharp angle at last past Jim Barron. 1 0 to West Ham. So now Swindon, who've defended so bravely and been such a credit to themselves in the third division, have so much to do. They've had their breaks in this second half and nothing quite has gone for them. And they really got West Ham to the point of frustration and almost to desperation. But now West Ham could be hard to deny. Here's Patton. Here's Brookie. Holland to best. Dixon. Play on, said the referee, so West Ham are happy to do that. It's with uh, Trevor Brookie. There's Billy Bonds. Padden. Brooking. And a throw to West Ham United. They were so worried about playing uh, Swindon Town, who they respect on this difficult pitch, and certainly Swindon have made them fight every inch of the way. Here's the long throw now, coming from Graham Patton, having wiped the ball on his shirt, to Brooking, and a corner. So 
West Ham. We've got a fair number of people up still for this corner as Brooking takes it. Best with the header! Good Lord, how did that manage to stay out? Almost with the back heeler getting it in there. A deeper corner that time from Brooking. And a good jump by Clyde Best on the far side. Not quite going home. Lampard calling Tommy Taylor into the scene. And then losing the ball out as Moss now takes it up for Swindon. He's got Anderson in the middle and Easto. And it'll come now for Peter Easto. Yes, Easto is equalised. 1-1. West Ham, a great run down the right by Moss, and as the cross came over it eluded McDowell, and Easto had time almost to pick his spot, and put it past Mervyn Day to make it 1-1. So the Wiltshire voices that have been a bit silent for the last few minutes are making themselves heard again. So the man, Peter Easto, 21 goals now this season he scored. The man who cost them £80,000 from Wolverhampton has now put him in line for a replay. And Anderson, I think, quite happy to put it away to eat up a few more seconds. And Day wanting to get on with it with the uh, free the uh, goal kick. Just a matter of seconds away now from a replay for Swindon, and that again shows what their attitude is, just to keep the ball out of their own half. Referee Clive Thomas looked at his watch once. I think he might add on a little time for injury and a little time for time-wasting as well. Some Wiltshire whistles are going around the ground, and Swindon are almost there. They came here in 67 and got a 3-3 draw and won the replay 3-1. The referee looks at his watch again, it's McDowell on the far side now. Can they yet do it? No, they can't, because the final whistle has gone. And Swindon have got themselves a wonderful draw. One they thoroughly deserve, when they defended so well for so long. And Peter Easto, the number nine, is the man who scored the goal for them when all seemed lost. After Billy Jennings had put West Ham into the lead. A tremendous credit then to Swindon and to the third division. They fought so well and never better than when they were down to come back and snatch an equaliser, which means a replay against West Ham. So we have then a final score line and another cup upset in the fourth round. A final score, West Ham won, Swindon Town won. And still to come today, that wonderful Wimbledon uh, performance and a chance to meet their hero, goalkeeper Dickie Guy. And also, of course, Coventry against Arsenal. So that replay between West Ham and Swindon is on Tuesday. And it's one that West Ham can hardly relish because that Swindon pitch is going to be very, very difficult indeed. But now let's meet the Swindon hero of yesterday, their goal scorer, Peter Easto. After the match, I asked him for his reaction to that 1-1 draw. Feel great, honest Brian. The uh, the lads feel chuffed to death. Really, I think we've got a great chance. What's the reaction been like in the dressing room in those last uh, few minutes before you came out across to do this interview? Uh, they're very calm, really. I think they're not saying too much, you know, because of the replay, really. I think if we'd have got a result, it'd have been would have been better off. You defended very well. Did you always feel that you were in with a chance today? Yes, I, I did. Every time, right? every time they attacked, so I always thought we was in with a chance. People are going to say that the pitch leveled things out a little bit. Made no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so, really. We, we played really well, and I think you can't take it away from us, really. All the team. What about when West Ham scored? Did you think that was all up with you then? No, I think all the lads really tried well. I don't think we got our heads down at all, and uh, I think we really attacked. You know, and played well. And then came your moment. Tell us how you saw that now. Yeah, so, well, Dave made a break along the right and uh, crossed the ball. And John McDowell went into the box and missed the ball. And it just came to me. Like, and then what happened? Now, what went through your mind then? Well, the, uh, I knew he'd missed it. And I knew I had plenty of time. But the ball didn't run forward. It stuck in the mud, really. But I just got a left, po left foot to it and poked it in, really. And then what? Well, that was it. <laughs> Magic. Replay Tuesday, what do you reckon? 
No, we must have a great chance. All the lads are pretty confident and I think we've got a great chance. I think everybody who saw you play today, Peter, were very impressed. Well, I hope they are. I think Swindon deserve more mentions than they get, really. Well, they've got a good one today. Anyway. Yes, great. Thank Lovely. you very much. Thank you, Peter. Thank, Thank you, you. Well, before we leave that game, one little controversial moment that I think uh, needs clearing up. And it came in the second half when West Ham's Tommy Taylor deliberately pulled back Trevor Anderson of Swindon when he was right through and got a booking for it. Now, a lot of people would say that the punishment there didn't exactly fit the crime. Although, talking to the referee Clive Thomas afterwards, he said, well, there was no way that he could send him off. Although the top refereeing official, Ken Aston, who is chief instructor for FIFA, added that he would like to see a slight restructuring of the laws to allow referees to punish that sort of gamesmanship there much more severely. That is, obviously, with a sending off.